What up, Web? Welcome to an episode of Dummy Data. Today, what we're going to be looking at is ticker data. Um, and we're going to be using the site Quando. And all Quando is, is it's just a website that curates, you know, financial, economic data sets that you can kind of pull from multiple various sources. They kind of do all the work of curating everything for you. And all we're really going to do is just pull the data from there. So ultimately, what you would do is set up an account with Quando, subscribe um, to their platform. You pay a monthly fee but you have access to all of this data. And that's what we're gonna be using. And I'm basically going to be accessing Quando via an API where my account would have an associated API key to be able to pull this data down. What we're gonna do is we're gonna build a workflow that's going to automate that process. And then in that, what we'll end with is weekly price data as well as weekly charts. And that's cool because now you can start to understand what's happening in the market or, you know, for a bunch of tickers that Quando covers, you know, what's going on, what's the price activity. And the cool part, and I think this is why people love the stock market, is because ultimately it's a barometer of the economy. Usually when the stock market is going down, there's something happening in the world, you know, because again, you know, what a ticker or a stock is, is just ownership into a company that produces some type of good or service. And then ultimately, the performance of that company is what you're buying into. You're, you're paying for a piece of that performance, whether that's going to be capital gains or whether it's just going to be a dividend. But you're paying it. You're buying that. And for me, I love investing in the stock market because of the fact that, you know, it gives you sometimes, not all the time, you know, a higher return when it comes to your money. So your money is making more money than it would if it was just sitting into in a traditional savings account or things of that nature. I don't know, maybe you have a savings account that has a high yield on it, but for the most part, you can usually get a higher return from the market. And if you're the type of person that's buying, you know, shoes from Nike, buying products from Apple, you know, shopping, you know, uh, at this store and that store, you know, why wouldn't you want an ownership, why, why wouldn't you want a part ownership of the success of some of these companies? You know, it's kind of the same concept. So today what we're gonna be doing is automating that process of getting the data and then ultimately you can do whatever you want with it. Um, and that's kind of the cool part. So, and I just want to say that this is not by any means any type of investing advice. It's not meant to be investing advice because hey, at the end of the day, we all just dummies. Um, but it's just meant to get the data, standardize it and be able to go to that next level of analysis. So let's open up Ultrix and let's get started. Okay, so if we pop into Ultrix, here I have an API key and API call. Within the call, I would need to replace tick with each ticker and key with the API key associated with my Quando account. I already have the macro set up to create a data set that has country, exchange, industry, sector for the ticker, and I have the full name of each ticker. And this is just all the available tickers that are covered by Quando. I wanna use this data set as my starting point. So I'm gonna pull on the unique tool so that I'll be able to return a list of tickers accounting for any duplicates. Then I'll use a select tool and only select the ticker column, deselecting everything else. So now I wanna use the append tool to tag every ticker in the data set with the API call and key. Dragging down a formula tool, we'll create a formula assigned to the API call field. I wanna replace the string parentheses tick parentheses, you know, what you see there, using a regex replace formula. So within our API call, the piece you see saying tick will now have a ticker like AA, AAA, PL, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Then I want to just do the same operation for my API key. And this will get us ready to send those calls to Quando and be able to receive a payload um, from the site. So I'm gonna pull down a download tool and to configure it, I'll select the API call field as my URL. I'll leave the output default to string with the data encoded as UTF-8. What's important to note is I'll receive structured data from Quando formatted in XML or extensible markup language. This is just a data set that is both readable to me and to Ultrix. So I can use the XML parse tool and this will parse out the download data field. And what we get is a structured data set with end of day ticker price data. All I did was assign field names to their applicable columns and deselected everything that wasn't relevant. 
all the fields defaulted to variable with strings. So I'll use the auto field tool to fix that, which will automatically assign field types to the applicable field column. Okay, so at this point, we've taken a list of tickers, we've assigned that to an API call, we've pushed that call to Quando, and we've pulled down XML. We parse that XML out, and that's our daily ticker act price activity, right? And that's great. But what I want to do is I kind of want to aggregate that up. Daily prices is a little bit too granular. I want weekly prices, and I also want charts. I want to actually be able to see, uh, the, see the trends. So what I want to do is within this layer of a standard macro, I want to create a batch macro. I want to go a layer into this uh, into this macro. And this is going to have basically be another process. What this batch macro is going to do is its job is to take this daily data, aggregate it to weekly data, and then create some charts to then feed back into our standard macro, right? And then at the end of the day, what I'll have is I'll have a data set of weekly price activity as well as weekly charts. So to set up the batch macro, what I wanna do is group by each ticker, which will serve as the batch or iteration, and the input is going to be the full data set. I'll copy that from the results window, and in a new workflow, paste and convert it to a macro input tool. If I add in a control parameter tool, then this standard macro will be converted to a batch macro and think that this control parameter is the batch parameter. To create a weekly aggregated data set, I wanna first create a week column. Using a date time format formula within a formula tool, I'll concatenate the year and week number. Then I'm going to sort the data ascending by ticker, week, and date. I want to summarize the ticker data by week and take the associated ending date, which will be my week end. And then I'm just going to assign the open to be the first, the high to be the max, the low to be the min, the close just to be that last closing date, the last closing price, the sum of all volume, and then for close adjusted, do the same operation that we did for close. Then I'm going to add in a multi-role formula tool. This will just give me whether the day was up, down, or unchanged from the previous day. Finally, I want to add in my ticker attributes. And with the find and replace tool, append in the company, country, exchange, industry, and sector. And now we're ready to build a chart. So before we build the chart, I just want to filter the data set to just be the last three years of price activity. So then that way I don't get the full history, um, but just what's happened recently. Then I can pull down an interactive chart tool and configure the chart. I'm just going to give the chart a name. The type is going to be candlestick. The x-axis is going to be the date, and then the associated open, high, low, close are going to be the fields that we just set up. So then if the price is increasing, it's just going to be black, and then I can just format some of the colors there. And if the price is decreasing, then it's just going to be red. And again, this is just formatting some of the colors there. And now I want to batch it. So again, what I'm going to batch it by is the company. I want to batch it by the ticker and then the sector. And all this is going to do is it's going to create a new chart for each company, ticker, and sector. And then just clean up the chart name. So you can see here's the chart that we have for Apple, ticker, AAPL, within technology. Then the last thing I want to do is just convert those browse tools to output tools, so macro output tools. And this is what's ultimately going to get outputted from this batch macro. So now what I want to do is pop back into the standard macro. I'm going to input in the new batch macro that we just created. And then I want to assign my uh, input, my control group to be the ticker, input group to be the ticker. Again, this is just the input data that's coming in. And then the batch parameter is going to also be the ticker, or it's going to batch per each ticker. 
And then lastly, to, to finalize the standard macro, I just want to output the data um, to an Ultrix database on my file drive. Um, and what's important to note is that I want to take the field name or the file name from sector. So what I'll have is I'll have an Ultrix database per each sector. And if I open that up, I see all the tickers in their, either their price data or their chart data. And here we can see for healthcare, here are all the tickers assigned to the healthcare sector. And then here's the price activity or the charts for that. All right, so we're done. So what we did, it was kind of crazy, but we basically created a standard macro, right? And this standard macro, all it's doing is it's taking daily prices from Quando. Then we created a batch macro, right? And what this batch macro is doing is it's just taking those daily prices, converting it to weekly, creating some charts for us, and then spitting that back out into our standard macro. Then what I did was I just wanted to save this data down uh, per each sector. So what I'll have is I'll have a file or I'll have an Ultrix database per each sector. And if I click into that, I see all the tickers for healthcare, technology, consumer discretionary within that. And then I have the weekly charts to go along with it. The cool part about this is that in building this macro, now you can kind of set it and forget it. You can run this at the end of every week and what you'll get is weekly stock prices and weekly charts, right? So now your head can kind of start to spin because you can do a lot with this. You can basically automate this process, right? To give you weekly stock prices and charts. And then this data can now feed into something else, whether you want to start to, uh, you know, do, you know, you know, time series analysis or trend analysis or whatever you want to do. But what we've done is we've automated the process. We've automated the work. We've done all the work now. Each week, now all we do is we run this workflow. Um, and that's kind of the cool part about it. And now what we're doing is we're consuming the data. <laughs> we're consuming it. And we're just saying what happened with the weekly price data for the price data for the last couple of weeks. And if we had a model set up, we can you know, reassign or, 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 um, or rework the model. If we're just looking to you know, get the top 25 or top 20, we can do all that. Um, but what this process has done is it's given us weekly price data. Um, so what I want to do in this next session is I want to do the same thing. I want to get, uh, but instead of weekly price data, I want to get fundamentals from uh, from Quando, and that's kind of the other side of it. With chart, with tickers, you have the you know the the price activity, but then you kind of have the fundamentals, and that's just you know income, assets, liabilities, things of that nature. Um, so that's what we're going to do in this next part.